is a product that is good for your body and the planet. Hi sharks. My name is Dr. Stacy Whitman. I'm a board certified pediatric dentist from Portland, Oregon, and I'm here today seeking $200,000 for 10% equity of my company. Now sharks, with millions of people seeing your beautiful smiles every week, I'm sure you floss daily. And you should, because cavities and gum disease are two of the most chronic diseases globally. Well, are you ready for me to drop some more truth bombs? <laughs> oh my god! <gosh. laughs> This is only 3,000 flossers repurposed from my dental office. If you use single-use plastic every day to floss your teeth, you will create nearly 30,000 pieces of trash in your lifetime. That's 10 times this amount. Now, these plastic flossers will take nearly 400 years or more to break down, if they ever do, potentially releasing plastics, microtoxins, and microplastics into our soil, oceans, and eventually, our bodies. Sharks, say goodbye to petroleum-based plastics, and say hello to Happy Floss. Happy Floss is the world's first flosser designed for true compostability. It's made of layers of post-consumer recycled paper, making it biodegradable, breaking down in under one year. No toxins, no microplastics, just clean soil. It's good for you and it's good for our planet. So who's with me, Sharks? Who wants to help me create happier teeth and a healthier planet together? In front of you are your own flossers to check out and get to flossing. So this is like the ones that we all know, we see in the store. Yours is really very, very similar, but it's paper. Correct, so most floss picks right now are made of petroleum-based plastics, and I'm sure you've read about microplastics being found now in our blood, in our soil, in our water. How do you come up with this idea? So I was at a dental conference in Hawaii, and uh, I was walking to the conference, and I was shocked as I walked along the marina and the shore with how much trash was in the, on the shoreline in the ocean. And as I looked closer, I noticed all these plastic flossers. And I had this epiphany because I encourage parents of small children to use floss picks because it's so much easier than using string. The oral healthcare industry, it's a $5 billion industry. Flossers make up about a half a billion dollars of that. So when I saw those flossers in Hawaii, and I paired that with me telling parents, you need to floss your kids' teeth, and I'm in Portland, Oregon, where people are very conscientious about the environment, parents would come in to me and say, nope, we're not flossing. I can't use the string, and I'm not using plastic flossers. No, thank you. And I'd say, wait, you're gonna, your child might get cavities here, you know. So they felt that strongly against flossing their children's teeth because of plastic? Plastic. Which, I mean, I mean, I, it I, kills me every time I put one of these into the trash can with my own kids. Like, I want to buy this. I want to be a consumer so this of this. So this isn't out but, there yet. Wait, hold on, Lori, Correct. Th this okay. is a pre-sale so prototype, beginning. and I am here. Uh, this struggle is the machinery, it is manufacturing, because this has never been made before. And that's why I'm here, is because I know what pull you have, and I want okay, to partner. Stacey, let me let me drill down on something here. Let's say we all agree on the merit of the project, okay? I learned when I was graduating, I did my project on the dental business for dental <laughs> cabinetry in North America. That's what my thesis was on. And I learned that all the dental equipment in your office is controlled by three behemoth companies, yeah. including distribution of everything you use. Why wouldn't you take this idea to any one of those three and you license it to them? How could you possibly make money selling these things one at a time to a system that's already pre-established? Well, the margins can be up to 50% on floss picks, actually. But Patents, how are you going to sell it? Direct or to are consumer. You selling, are you, you're well, not selling it yet. I'm not selling it yet. Okay. These have all been handmade. And so I am here to try to get manufacturing going to get but what, these on shelves. But why shelf. would you want to manufacture it when the, the you He know, has a good point. Do you have a patent? I have 
a utility patents pending in US, Europe, and Canada. But they're pending. So what's the likelihood of you getting those grants? Very high. So the biggest competitor is Humble Co. If you've seen them, they no. they are taking over the market. So how are you going to compete against them? You. I need you. Us. To help me, and that's you know, why I'm here. With all due respect, we do have full-time day jobs. We need to rely on the entrepreneur, and then we can empower them yes. and help them. But you tell. I just want to summarize the story you're telling us. I don't have a product out in the market. I have a fierce competitor. I haven't sold one cent, but I'm worth $2 million and you're gonna help me do everything. Well, I do a pre-sale. So we did a crowdfunding last year and I've done pre-sales through my office also um, about $100,000 to date. Okay, so what are you selling these for? for? So we started at $12.99 for a 30 pack, which is very high. So That's crazy. we know when manufacturing happens that we will get the price point down. But you're I not think even entertaining going to a manufacturer that already does this? I, I don't know who to go to. I don't know who you're to go to. You're a dentist and you don't know the three suppliers? They, they're not interested in this. This is a consumer product. This will be a direct to consumer product. I totally disagree with you. I mean, my goodness, I, I, I can't even imagine you going into the manufacturing of dental floss. I mean, that's like a joke. And for that reason, I'm out. So your heart is in the right place. Your caring about the environment is in the right place. What you don't know is to go ahead and manufacture these requires a person to be running that business full time and you know doing so many things that you don't know anything about. Not to say you couldn't figure it out, but I have to say I agree with Kevin it would be a much better route for you and much easier to give it to somebody who's in that space already and you'll get a royalty. So for me, there's nothing to invest in at this moment. I wish you good luck, but I'm out. Thank you. Dr. Whitman, like Lori said, that your heart is in the right place and you wanna solve several issues. I, I really, really applaud that. But I don't think this business is investable at this moment. And for that reason, I'm out. Thank you. Well, I think that I'll you would be using my money for tuition. Right now, I would have to try to take 50% of the company, and then all of a sudden, I would be figuring it out with you, and then we figure out maybe it's not going where you want to go, and now I own 50% of your dream. Or, in a certain amount of time, at your pace, because you got a day job, you'll figure out those answers. It's just a little too early at the moment, so I'm out. Hey, Stacy, you have one shark left. Stacy, every entrepreneur has different types of challenges. And in your particular case, business is not your background. You've got the mission, which is admirable. You've got the brain power to figure out how to get there, but you don't have any of the business chops at all. And that makes you completely dependent on somebody else. And I just don't think I can overcome those issues for you. So for that reason, I'm out. Good luck. Good luck. I appreciate all we your hope advice. you get Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't get a deal, but I still look at it as a success because I gained so much information and advice from the sharks and I'm spreading the message about the importance of oral health um, and the importance of sustainability in the oral health care market. So I consider it a win. I recently found out I'm predisposed to periodontal disease and now I've gone into a program of getting my teeth cleaned every single three weeks. That's wow. how you avoid it. Well, <laughs> Kevin, as a vampire, you can't operate without your teeth. <laughs> That's really That's great, good, Kevin. <laughs>